Welcome to the Hetty NJ Podcast, where we bring you up close and personal with cannabis influencers in New Jersey and beyond. I am your host, Brian Walsh, founder of Hetty NJ. Through our guest interviews and informational segments, we will be bringing you everything you need to know about the cannabis industry in New Jersey. We will discuss the latest in news, culture, and lifestyle information in the world of cannabis right here on our podcast. With cannabis legalization just around the corner in our state, there isn't a more important time to know what is going on. Today on our show, we're going to have Ed Fortune, otherwise known as NJ Weedman. He is a resident of California and New Jersey, as well as a business owner and cannabis worshiper. Ed was incarcerated over the last 16 months in Mercer County Correctional Facility. Some people may call him a political prisoner. Others may call him a revolutionary. One thing that is certain, he is definitely a medical cannabis advocate and a recreational cannabis advocate. Back in 2016, Liberty Bell Temple was raided by police. They did confiscate various controlled substances from the vehicles in Temple and surrounding property. And the weed mobile was confiscated and impounded. There was a confidential informant involved in that raid. So he found out who that was, put that information out publicly, and then he was arrested for witness tampering, which he, of course, fought. But ultimately, he was locked up. Now that Weed Man is free, he's been back in action, protesting, being an advocate, running his Liberty Bell, serving food at the joint hosting events. We're going to hear from Ed and hear what he has to say about upcoming cannabis legalization, what his plans are to protest. Although his tactics may be inappropriate to some, others would argue that scenarios such as those as what he has done help change the social climate on the issues of cannabis and incarceration. Today on the show, we have Ed Fortune, aka NJ Weedman. Hi, Ed. Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? We're doing really good. For our listeners who don't know who you are, why don't you introduce yourself and let them know some of the things you've been up to? Well, as you said, my, my name is actually Robert Edward Fortune, but publicly I've been known as the New Jersey Weed Man, and I kind of did that on purpose. I got arrested in 1997 for a marijuana bus, and my way of fighting back was to openly advocate jury nullification. I adopted the moniker of NJ Weedman, New Jersey Weedman, for the sole purpose, really, of, of reaching the public. It was a gimmick. It was a pretty successful gimmick, because very few people even know my real name now. And I've been NJ Weedman in press and publications all over the world. And at this point, uh, legalization is practically here in New Jersey. And I've been advocating for the legalization basically since 1997. So you would think... I'd be very, very happy, but actually, I'm not. You're not happy because of the bill and how it's unfolding, or the whole industry? What specifically are you not happy about? Well, a combination of all that, but especially with the bill, especially with Senator Scutari, I feel that Senator Scutari has taken bribes, has been paid off to create a bill that would cater to rich Cannabaggers, I call them cannabaggers, the rich corporations, at the expense of the little guys, the people. This marijuana culture has been here for a long time. The people in the state of New Jersey, the little people who have been advocating for, for legalization, we were not advocating for legalization so that it could be stolen by Senator Scutari and handed over to the cannabaggers, the corporations. You know, traditionally, the marijuana culture has been outsiders, I guess we call us the fringe group, the hippies, the counterculture movement. And now what he's done is through, you know, I, I call it bribery, but I guess they call it lobbying. You know, rich, rich corporations and individuals from other parts of the country, especially parts of the country that have already had legalization prior to us. They've made lots of money and now they're coming to New Jersey trying to get in on ours. And our politician, our number one politician who's at the forefront of this is Senator Scutari. And Senator Scutari has basically sold this out. He's, he's sold out legalization to corporate interest and at the expense of the little guys. I mean, people who have been victims of the uh, war on pot are barred from being a part of legalization, you know, via his bill. And, and it's like an incredible, like, like I said, I, 
I've been advocating for legalization since 1997, since I got busted. And now it's turned into a nightmare these last couple of years because of the way Senator Scatari has decided to write the bill. I mean, he could have wrote the bill where it was like a free market type uh, uh, industry, more similar to how California did it. He had the, the opportunity to make this a uh, free market system to cater to, to fix some of these people who were ruined with the war on drugs and marijuana prohibition, and instead he sold it out to corporate interests. And my, my thing is, when I'm sitting here watching this, as I've watched it for the last couple of years, I have complained. I have voiced my opinion. I've said things out loud. I've protested here, there, and the other, and I've actually suffered for it. And I watch the vast majority of people, you know, they're happy that legalization is coming. So I, with there, I'm, I'm with it too. Very, <coughs> excuse me. No problem. Very few people understand some of the, some of the little things involved in this law. And it irks me. I mean, I, not only did I want it to be legal, I wanted to, to participate. I said I got busted in 1997. I got busted selling marijuana. My advocating for the legalization wasn't so much that I just wanted it legal, which I did, but I wanted it legal for everybody. I what would happen to me to happen. And I also wanted to be able to sell weed legally one day. And now here we are, like I said, 20 years later, legalization is right here. And Senator Skatari has basically stolen the bill and he's handing it to corporate interest and the little guys are left out or the only, only thing we can do is patronize this industry that he's creating. And this industry, I call it the white market since there's already an existing black market. So I call what he's creating the white market and the white market excludes the, the black market. And, and trust me, the black market is huge. You know, the black market is all over the state. Every town, every community has a weed man. I'm just a little vain, and I claim the entire state. I call myself NJ Weed Man, but there's a weed man in every community. There are communities out there who had this, had had weed men that, that have have sold and, and and bartered marijuana for decades. And for for him to create this industry, it's like discover discovering America and claiming you know you're, you're you're Christopher Columbus and you're discovering America and you're ignoring the fact that there are there are natives already here, and, and and that's what he's doing. Creating this legalization, like there's not, like there's not already an industry here. There's already an industry here. There's already a distribution system here. All we need to do is make it legal. Instead, he's stolen it and handed it to corporate interests, or he's attempting to hand it to corporate interests. And I'm so frustrated. I've been to jail a couple times for this. I've been to jail. I've been locked up, arrested for protesting. The state of New Jersey just locked me up for the last six for 16 months basically in 2017 and part of 2018. And I think a lot of it had to do with just me being an outspoken critic of some of these uh, uh, senators and politicians and Senator Scatari being one of them, Senator Lesniak, Senator Sweeney. These are the guys who I've been complaining about that they're, that they're selling us out and they threw me in jail. But unfortunately for me in America, you still have to, have a jury to rubber stamp anything. You can't just get thrown in, 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 a, in a gulag and just forever. At some point in America, you have to have a trial. And when I went to trial, of course, uh, I was found not guilty. And <clears throat> now I'm back, I'm here, and I want to try to make as much noise and pub publicity as, I, as possible to stop this, this legalization. And not because I don't want legalization, but I just don't like this bill and how they're doing it. And I'm not the only one that feels that way, but unfortunately, I'm, you know, I've already been ruined. So I have really nothing to lose by standing up and, and speaking out loud. Whereas a lot of other people, they have jobs, they have this, they have careers, they have, they have, uh, you know, they they they, they can't take a, a direct hit. They don't want to take the direct hit. So I've launched a new campaign that I call hashtag Sell Weed Like I'm White. Because I've been vowing and telling the, the mainstream press and telling anyone who will listen, and I posted on Facebook, I posted on my website, that the day that Senator Scutari's bill is passed, is signed into law, I'm going to start selling weed like I'm white. And I want the spectacle of them arresting me. I want the spectacle of them trying to prosecute me. And my defense will be, they just created a racist law, a law that favors white people, and excludes black people. 
a law that favors rich people and excludes poor people. And I will be standing before a jury of mostly middle class people and poor people. And I doubt I'll be convicted. And I want this farce and mockery to be to be publicized. I I've talked to the mainstream press so far. None of them have written about it. I've put things on Facebook. Facebook keeps on banning me. I know what it is. It's, uh, people who oppose my arguments are constantly reporting me to Facebook so Facebook can block me. But my issue is still getting out there. My campaign slogan, my opposition to this legalization is being heard. Do you think it's simply bring it into the mainstream or do you think there's more at play? No, he sold it out. It's, it's, way, it's, it's a lot in play. If he wanted to bring it mainstream, it's simply vote to make it legalized, to, to stop arresting people, to remove it from the Schedule 1, the New Jersey Schedule 1 schedule classification, change our 2C laws. That would have been legalization. No, what he did, he's, he's, it's, it's actually a scheme that what he's doing. He's creating a new industry from scratch. And this new industry is ignoring the people, the culture, the lifestyle that has been in existence for a long time, the black market. He's totally ignoring us and is creating this industry that caters to these rich corporations and people who are lining his pockets and donating to his political party. And like I said, I, I'm pretty powerless to stop it, but I can sure make a lot of noise about it. And one of the things I'm going to do is when they start, when they make it legal for white guys to sell weed, I'm going to start selling weed like a white guy, like I'm white. Hashtag sell weed like I'm white. That's what I'm doing. Sell weed like I'm white. And what do you say to people who say you're playing the race card with that? I'm going to say that the cards got dealt to me a long time ago. I got dealt this race card. To play it is, hey, I got dealt it. I didn't deal the cards, but I'm playing it. I'll play the card that's been dealt to me. And the race card has been played a long time ago. You know, the, the, the war on marijuana started out as racist here in America. It's been enforced rac racially here in America. It's been prosecuted racially. And I'm not saying white people don't get arrested for marijuana. I'm definitely not saying that. I was in prison with white guys who were in prison for marijuana, too. You know, but they are few and far between. The vast majority of <clears throat> the victims of the marijuana laws have been people of color. And now, as legalization is coming, and millions of us, over the course of the last 70 years, millions of us have been arrested and ruined under the marijuana laws. So it's really offensive to many of us that as legalization comes, who's going to be making the millions? White guys. And, like, we're excluded. Like, if you're a felon under Scatari's bill, you can't participate. Under Scatari's bill, you got to be like a millionaire to sell weed. It's like so many of us, <laughs> we went to prison trying to become millionaires, and now we're watching millionaires getting the opportunity to sell weed legally. And they're not really selling weed legally. I have to, you know, make sure your audience understands the federal government still has marijuana illegal. So what the state of New Jersey with Senator Scartari is doing is cutting out basically a protection for this cartel, this cannabis corporations that he's setting up and offer protection from the federal government and making it legal through the state. So as far as I'm concerned, what these corporations will be doing selling weed is illegal under the federal law, and I'm going to sell weed too. And that would be one of my arguments before before uh, juries. Like, listen, what, what I'm doing is illegal under federal law. What they're doing is legal under federal law too. But the state of New Jersey is protecting them, unequal protection of them, while at the same time prosecuting me. And I don't think that any jury would find me guilty. And I have the balls, I have the dedication to follow through on my promise. And like I said, they, they legalized it. Today is October 20, 29th, right? Actually, the, the state assembly was supposed to vote on it today. And somehow they got postponed. They decided not to vote. But I was going to start selling weed today. The day that the Senate passed it, I was going to start selling weed. So fine. They didn't pass it. They pushed it off. So the day I start has been pushed off too. This is outrageous to me that what is going on. And very few people say anything, which is another reason that I'm that I'm upset that no one says anything, even the press, the mainstream press, which I, I can't really knock it. The mainstream press is pretty much um, has covered me for, for years. You know, there's a few things that they just stay away from. They won't cover. Like they never, they never will cover any of my, 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 my child visitation issues or anything like that. And this right here is I'm making these statements, been making these statements for a couple of months that I was going to sell weed like I'm a white guy. 
and the mainstream press is totally ignoring me. You know, they haven't ignored me in years, except for a couple topics, and this is one of them. You actually went out and sold weed already, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I, you know, as part of my uh, campaign, I'm going to sell weed like a white guy. I said I was going to actually do it right in front of the governor's office. I was basically giving notice to all the politicians that I'm serious, that I'm going to start. They can do whatever they want to do. They think that I'll be the victim. They think the government will come and arrest me. I want that to happen, you know, and I want that spectacle of them legalizing marijuana. At the same time, they're still prosecuting a black man. I think this is an Did unjust they arrest law. You that day? Did no. No, they don't want that spectacle. I'm pretty. Listen, before I actually did that, where I was smoking a couple of weeks ago in front of the governor's office and selling weed and selling clones, I, I, I put out a press release that I sent to the prosecutor's office, the attorney general's office, numerous uh, state officials, and the governor, governor's office. And then I went and so did you were selling, it. Yeah, you were selling be, plant, plants? Yeah, you was, were selling clones, you said? I was selling clones. I was selling jars of marijuana. And I was smoking. I don't have a, a, a medical marijuana license, so my smoking was illegal. I don't have a license to distribute marijuana, so I was definitely violating that, those laws. I, I had clones. Clones in itself is manufacturing. So I clearly was violating the laws. And I think the police were given instructions by somebody not to arrest me. So again, I say when they start, when they legalize marijuana, I'm going to start selling too. Now, I don't know if they're going to give instructions to police not to, not to arrest me, not to bother me. I have no idea, but I'm going to do it. Now you're currently suing the Trenton police department. Is that correct? Yes. I'm suing the Trenton police department, the city of Trenton, uh, Hawks towing and several members of the prosecutor's office for the phony charges and basically the setup and entrapment they did to me in 2016 to, to lock me up. Is that stemming from when you were locked up for the 16 yes. months that you mentioned yes. earlier? In, 2000, in 2016, okay. the city of Trenton Police Department started kind of like picking on me, started bothering me, basically because of the, the nighttime hours that I had here at my restaurant and at my, my sanctuary. Before you continue to go into what happened, why don't you dial back a minute and just talk about for the listeners who don't know, talk about the joint in Liberty Bell Church. What is it? How to get started? And then in 2015, me and my girlfriend Debbie Medeo, we rented this building, which is directly across the street from City Hall in Trenton. It has a restaurant in it, and it has two other spaces. The restaurant we called NJ Weed Man's Joint, which you know just sells food. It is a marijuana themed restaurant, a munchy place. Uh, in the middle, the middle space is what we call the uh, Liberty Bell Temple. It's a uh, sanctuary. Uh, it's named after a protest I had done at the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia back in the early 2000s. And it was actually Liberty Bell Temple 3 because I had two prior to this in Los Angeles. And these temples, you know, we provide marijuana to people. We have a congregation, a place where people can think, can network, partake together. And, um, being right here across the street from City Hall, to me, was like a very outspoken thing to do. I wanted people to know about it. And I say I got a lot of press. We got a lot of press those first five, six, seven months. And then maybe about the eighth or ninth month, the police officers started messing with us. Like I said, uh, trying to make me close at night, trying to sit sit their cars across the street and intimidate people who are coming here or not. So I filed a lawsuit against them. And when I filed a lawsuit, they retaliated by hiring this rat named Zev Lapis to entrap me in a crime. And anybody who understands the uh, law and understands entrapment, police officers are allowed to stop crime. They're allowed to enforce laws. They're allowed to help prosecute crimes, but they're not empowered to create crime. And that's what they did when they hired Zev Lapis. They hired this guy to create a crime so they can arrest me. Like they can't come in and cause crime that wouldn't otherwise happen? Is that what you mean? Yes, I wasn't selling weed. And they got this guy to come in and beg me for weed. I give it to him, and then they arrest me for it. But they, they're the ones that caused that. They, they created that crime. That crime wouldn't have happened hadn't it been for them. So long story short, they wound up arresting me for that, dragged me through the, through the jail system for 16 months. But ultimately, I went to trial, and I won. But the place is still here. I got, I got released while I was in jail. Uh, uh, Debbie paid for the paid for everything, and it still exists. And now I'm, you know, I'm still moving. It was on. closed while you were um, incarcerated. It's still here, correct? but it's yes. just, but now it's reopened. Mm -hmm. And you're doing yeah. all sorts of things there. I saw you have a 
Smoking Word coming up, 420 Game Night, a Halloween Party, I think was last night or the other night, or maybe even both, Chess Night. So you have all sorts of activities going on, and those are all taking place in the Liberty Bell. Yeah. And what it is, I want, I want people to come here for all these events, you know, of course, eat. And coming here, participating, meeting other potheads, you didn't, you know, networking. Like, this is what I envisioned. I don't know. I think it's happening. It's not happening as much as it was prior to me getting locked up. The government did scare a lot of people off. And, I mean, I'm still kind of shocked that it was all public. Everyone saw it. And now, the, 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 you know, I beat, this, I beat the government. I was expecting hundreds of people to come here, flock here. But for some reason, I, I guess there are a lot of people who are afraid of the government and who they're not coming here. And that's what I think. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I have bad food. Maybe it's my breath. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I haven't heard those things. Yeah, I, but <laughs> Maybe but people, people just, just don't know that in. you're back in action and open, too. So I wanted to give the opportunity for you to let people know about Weed Man's Joint and the Liberty Bell. Now, can anyone just walk in off the street and just come into the Liberty Bell? Do they have to sign up? Is there any sort of process involved? No, they, they, they can just come here. Um, you can come to anybody come to, come to the restaurant and there's no weed in the food. They can come to the sanctuary, the temple. The temple, you know, as a, as a means to having port and stuff, I, I have begun selling memberships. And these memberships would include private audiences, mm-hmm. access at all times, things like that. But again, it's slow after what after what happened to me when you talk about cannabaggers and i know you say sell weed like the white guy but you say that cannabaggers could be of any race yeah they could there's very few like for instance just recently the state of new jersey basically has put up a bidding war for uh six dispensaries medical marijuana dispensaries and 148 applications came in three Three were people of color, and they all happened to be rich. Um, a guy in Trenton named Tracy Syfax, who's a millionaire, he's black. Al Harrington, who was a, a, used to be played in the NBA in, uh, for Indianapolis, he, he applied. He's from Jersey. Armani Toomer, who used to be a wide receiver for the, uh, the Giants. These are the three black people who, you know, rich people who applied. And <clears throat> so there are exceptions to the rule, but basically the rule is rich white guys. Um, and I hope these, at least one of these three get one of the medical licenses, but I personally doubt any of these three get it either. I don't know. It's, it's just amazing. Like there is a, there's a, there's a black market currently right now. I mean, I can, I have no problems getting weed. I could, I could leave right here now and go to numerous locations around the city of Trenton and pick up weed and come right back here. They're like, there is no, there's no shortage of marijuana because it's illegal. What it, what it is, is because it's illegal, people go to jail, people get arrested, people have their lives ruined. Now, that's what should stop. That's what legalization would be. But like I said, Senator Scutari has stolen legalization and he's selling it to corporations. Do you think that people would approve legalization if it was up for a vote? Yes. If it was a, a yes or no vote, it would get passed. No problem. I think what it is, is this bill... There's a lot of people who won't even who don't read it or anything, so they may still vote for it. But I think the people who are really into it and really read and understand it, they won't. Just like the people, they wouldn't vote for it. Just like the people of Ohio a couple of years ago, they had the ability to vote for it, and they read it and they rejected it because in Ohio it was a scheme by the Ohio legislators, similar to the scheme that Senator Scutari is doing. And what they did was. They basically made it legal for 10 corporations, 10 rich white guys to sell marijuana to the rest of the public. And the public in Ohio, they rejected that. And they'd rather have no bill than have this scheme. And, you know, here in New Jersey, we don't have that ability. It's the, the politicians create the bill and the governor signs it. And that's it. And then it becomes law. So I want to I test it in, in, in court by violating it right away. But I don't think that people would vote for it if, if, if they had the, the chance and opportunity. I think... If the people had a voice in it, Scatari wouldn't even present this. He would have to do other things. He would have to listen to us. But as it is now, we're pretty irrelevant. It's, it's him and the corporations. We don't have any money. We're not putting hundreds of thousands of dollars into his political pockets for him to, to, to create the laws 
to favor us. That's these big, rich corporations. The corporations that already have made a lot of money in other states that legalized it. If we had legalized it here 20 years ago, 10 years ago, we wouldn't have this issue. But the state of New Jersey is slow to get in on this. People in other states obviously did this faster. People in California, Colorado, Washington State, Canada, they've gotten in on this marijuana industry, this legal marijuana industry for years. And now here they are bribing him and paying him to create our laws to cater to them. And like I said, I think if it was if we had the opportunity to vote, I think it would be it'd have a they'd have a hard time passing this. But as it is now, they're going to pass it one way or the other. They're going to pass it. And like I said, when they do, I'm going to start my protest right away by violating it. Well, they're taking all this time to, you know, whether it's get it right or get it wrong. But, you know, other states, New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland. They're all creeping up very quickly as well. Unfortunately, here, I think we may miss the boat. Well, everybody won't. <laughs> like I said, he's, no. he's, he's, <laughs> the he's select few will be there, right? Yeah, I think I think I think us little people are going to miss out on an opportunity. Definitely no home cultivation. Should be some home cultivation for the patients. Even for recreational, I can grow weed. I can totally grow weed. Technically. I'm a medical marijuana patient more than most medical marijuana patients are. I, I have a bone cancer condition. I have a, a painful condition that I don't even tout much, and I very rarely, you know, even call myself a patient. But I think anybody should be allowed to grow. I, it's not, I don't think it should just be for patient. I think anybody should grow. Or I can adopt this argument that all, all use is medical anyway. Even people that, that they say are recreational using or social using of it, you know, but it's for reasons that like it calms you down, it, it relaxes you, it soothes your anxiety, it helps you go to sleep. These are all medical uses. I'm one of these people who kind of fancy that argument that all use is medical anyway. Yeah, I just read an article today, I think, that said something about, you know, even people who don't know they're using it for medicinal use, they are using it for medicinal use, they just don't realize it. Are you currently running for office? And this wouldn't be the first time if you are, correct? I'm currently on a ballot running for state assembly in the 15th district, which covers most of the city of Trenton and up along the uh, Delaware River and some of the river towns, Lampertville, Hopewell, things, those towns. And yeah, I, I run for office every year, every time I get a chance. Not so much that I actually think I'm going to win, but it's just my way of protesting, my way of giving the finger to the system. Keeps your message out there, too. Keep, keeps you uh, sharp, right? And on your toes. Keeps your message fresh. Oh, yeah. Plus, I always get a couple thousand votes. I usually, I usually, I usually come in third. The Democrats and Republicans, one and two. And then it's the weed man. I usually beat any Green Party or Libertarian or any constitutional party, any other other independent parties. I, I'm the big man when it comes to independence. And I have no stru no no structured organization behind me. It's just me. Sometimes I don't even campaign. Like, for instance, this year, I got my name on about within a few days of me getting out of jail. I haven't campaigned at all. And I'll probably come in third. I'll probably get a few thousand votes. And just, just imagine if I had money to campaign. Just imagine if I could do uh, commercials on TV, if I, could, if I could do meet and greets and have a little staff to run around and get my message out, do robocalls. I believe I could win if I had money behind me. They won't let me put NJ Weedman anymore. You know, they created, they created a new rule back in 1998 because of me, because that's what I was doing, putting NJ Weedman as part of my slogan, as part of my name. And they removed that. I mean, that became state law that they changed that. I, I used to, I used to joke with people and say, listen, in the NBA, they had something called uh, the Jordan rules, which was designed to slow him down. And the state legislature did the same thing with me as the Weedman rules. And there's a few of them. You know, when it comes to election laws, that was one that, that was created because of me, where you couldn't put nicknames and slogans and stuff like that on, on, on the ballot. You had to go by your real name. And no one knows my real name. So to me, putting NJ Weedman down would have been better for me than, than my name. Well, I definitely knew you as NJ Weedman years before I knew you yeah, as uh, Ed Fortune. Exactly. You know, but, yep. <laughs> and I saw on Twitter, I think you posed the four dollar and 20 cent question we need to resist but how so to our listeners any suggestions on how to voice their opposition against this bill what can they do i would say call your politicians and things like that but calling your politicians doesn't do anything because you don't have any money if you were calling them saying i'm going to withhold my money you know then they would listen but right now, you know, they, they only listen to people with money. I mean, there were times in the past I've tried to organize protests, and I've gotten a couple hundred people to show up for things before. I think, and I wish, 
there would be a big opposition right now, like someone to put together a protest, to protest against this law, against this bill, against Qatari's bill. But again, who has the money to do that? We don't have the money to do that. And so many people just want legalization that they could care less about all the all the other issues. Right? All they want to do is be able to be legal. They don't they don't care about being there's a lot of most people don't want to sell weed. They don't want to be involved in it like that. All they want to do is not be arrested. And I can't blame them for feeling that way. This is unbelievable that they're getting ready to pass this law in front of us, right over us, and and we the people are irrelevant. We really are irrelevant. Qatari and these politicians, they don't really care what we think. What what this bill is about is about working it out with these corporations and the state government officials like him to create a law, a business, to create a new white market to sell marijuana to us. And me myself, I'm I, I you know I put a big I put a big campaign out during the summertime, hashtag boycott CCCs. That was boycott the Caucasian Cannabis Corporation. You know, I don't know if it's going to go anywhere, but I personally probably will never step into one of these legal dispensaries here in New Jersey because of the way it was presented. You know, and I, I, I just don't like it. And, it. and, you know, it's like it's not playing the race card. It's looking at my reality. They're creating a business. They're creating an industry that excludes me. I can't be a part of it. I can't have nothing to do with it. So why should I patronize it? Why should I buy some bud from these rich white guys who are selling weed and I can't sell weed myself? I can't have it. I don't, you know, a lot of people don't know me. Both my parents were entrepreneurs. I have had several businesses over the years. And, you know, I, I absolutely want to have a weed business. I, I went to California for five years and I had a dispensary on Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood until one day the DEA came and put me out of business. And, you know, I ended up back here in New Jersey. Um, but, I still feel the same way. I still want to have a a dispensary. Yeah, I think the people definitely are caught up in the excitement of the bills being passed. Maybe the thought of not looking over their shoulder anymore with legalization outweighs the details of the bills. But the devil's in the details, as we know. And I don't think enough people are privy to those details right now, or even if they care. Right. It's, It's hard to get people involved in anything and couple in the stigma of people like you said earlier you know maybe not even coming out to places like your restaurant or the church going out to rallies or town hall meetings you know because of the stigma and then on top of it people feeling like they don't really have a voice regardless it just it creates a no-win situation in people's minds I'm not saying it's true and then we are fighting the multi-million dollar conglomerates so it's a tough situation i think it's important for people to hear these issues and i think it's important for these issues to be raised and that's why we wanted to bring someone like yourself onto the show so we can get the message out there and get people thinking so even if the bill does get passed at least people are aware they're becoming more conscious becoming aware of things that could be better and hopefully over time we'll see some improvements in the bills because most likely the bills will be passed things can always be changed and hopefully we'll be able to go back and revisit them and make some improvements what do you think i'm afraid of that i'm afraid of them passing a bill that's wrong and then they'll never be able to get the political might behind it again to amend it. I mean, look at Kuma, the Compassionate Use of Medical Marijuana Bill. It was passed in 2010. It finally got amended in 2018. It took eight years to amend it. And like, like I don't know, I don't have eight years. I don't have 20 years. Let's, like, let's fix it now. Let's present a, a proper bill from the beginning. Why do you have to be a millionaire? Why are they, make, why are they making this so you have to be a millionaire to sell weed. Plus, I'm not even sure what the value of these dispensaries is going to be in five years. They're selling cannabis at ridiculous prices right now when the black market's half the amount. How sustainable is that model? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be in that black market publicly selling weed for like 250 or $200 an ounce instead of $500. And I'm going to be very, very public about it. It's already happening, and uh, I don't see why it would dissipate, you know, especially if the competition is double the price. And quality isn't that great at these dispensaries either. You know, they're charging top dollar, and then the quality is subpar. No, absolutely right. It's very shitty weed. Is there anything that you'd like to say in closing? I hope people really look, really research this, and just see, is this what, is this what you want? Is, is this legalization? I mean, it's not legalization to me. It's a scheme for a few people to be able to sell weed. And be legal. And yes, I use the word weed instead of marijuana or cannabis or ganja because I call myself the New Jersey weed man. Like maybe if I if I use cannabis all the time and I had caught myself cannabis man, 
I would use cannabis all the time. But whatever. I call it weed. I've always called it weed. Everyone's using cannabis now. Yeah, I call it weed, flower, herb, right. bud, you know, ganja, all those different things. Depends on the situation, depends on yeah, the Yeah, exactly. But, um, <laughs> but cannabis <laughs> seems to be the most politically uh, correct word. For now. <laughs> yeah. For now. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for taking the time out and speaking with us on Hetty and Jay. We really mm -hmm. appreciate oh, it. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for listening. How can our followers find you, find your restaurant, find your site? Why don't you go ahead and plug your um, stuff right now? Well, njweedmansjoint.com is the, is the restaurant. You can always find me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com, njweedman. I have uh, a public page and personal pages. I'm on Instagram. I'm on social media. Most social media is NJ Weedman. And I even have my phone number out there where anybody can just call me. Great. Very accessible. Nothing to hide. That's great. <laughs> Thanks so much. We will see you soon. Okay? All right. Thank you. See you later. That does it for this episode. Be sure to check us out at HeddyNJ.com, on Instagram at Hetty underscore NJ, Facebook Hetty NJ, and on Twitter at Hetty underscore NJ. Until next time, keep it heady. <laughs>